Corey is in Little Rock. Hi, Corey. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. What's up? Hi, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. How can we help? Um, I, my name is Corey. Um, I'm 32, and I my boss just passed away a couple of weeks ago, and so he left me some money, and so I'm just trying to really figure out what I'm supposed to do. Like my dad has told me what I need to do, but it's just it's a lot going on, and I'm just trying to because I don't have a job now since my boss passed away, but. Your boss help. left you money in his will. Yes. yes. Wow, that's an unusual arrangement. I was his personal assistant for eight years. Okay. Yeah, so he he did, um, he was an oil contractor, and so I did all his scheduling, everything. I was, as he used to call me, his go-to Go to gal mm-hmm. all the time. So, I mean, I just kept up with all of his books and everything that he needed done. And so, after I knew and he, he was didn't have pass, he didn't have family then. He did. He did. Okay. So his wife is the one that actually called me and let me know that I was left something. Oh, said, okay. So he didn't leave everything to you. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm, no. Just, I'm just trying. It's just an unusual story. It's a wonderful story, but I'm trying to understand. So, the uh, how much did he leave you? One point two five million dollars. Yes. Wow. Oh and my it, God! I. Well, That's just know, wild. I, I couldn't. Be- I couldn't believe. Well, what, what? I mean, what was the old guy worth? A billion or something? <laughs> Uh, he 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 has a lot. I mean, several properties. I helped him manage his properties. He would take me on trips with him and his family. My kids. He took care of my kids. I mean, wow. He was an amazing person. Wow. So, are you married? No. Okay. How old are your kiddos? Uh, I have a fifteen-year-old, a four-year-old, a three-year-old, and an eleven-month-old. And what was your income before before you lost your job? I was making sixty five K. Sixty five thousand dollars a year. One point mm-hmm. two five million. Wow. And the, I was pretty much living paycheck to paycheck doing that. I mean I shouldn't have, but I mean my kids are I'm doing it on my own, so Yeah. So do you have any debt currently? Any consumer debt? Uh, yes, I have um student loans and I have about forty thousand dollars in student loans. Okay. Um we're renting an apartment, so just month by month, that's twelve hundred dollars for our rent, and then my car. My mom gave me um, her car, so I have a two thousand six Honda Odyssey okay. minivan. All right. Well, you're very wise. You sound a little bit overwhelmed by this, a little bit scared. Even. I, I, well, my dad suggested that I. Because my boss was very flexible with my, with, because he knew I had kids and everything. So it was a lot of, I could work from home, do calls, calls and everything like that. I could do a lot of stuff from home. But now I don't think if I get another job, I will have that. And it's kind of the viewpoint my dad was looking at. So he was thinking like maybe if I take a break until my youngest, who's 11 months old, starts kindergarten. Because right now it would be like daycare for all of them. Well, mine is my 15 year old. It would be daycare for all of them. And he doesn't think that it would be wise for me to go back to work just yet and just use the money. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Okay. All right. Well, what, what I would suggest you do is that you build a, um, let me kind of pan back. Let's just zoom back for a second from worrying about, uh, what we're doing tomorrow. Overall, someone just handed you $1.25 million to manage. That's your new job. And you don't know how to do it. Okay. Is that right? Yes. That's why you call me. Yes. And that doesn't make you bad. That doesn't make you bad. It's just that you've never managed $1.2 million before, right? No, not okay. me. <laughs> Definitely not. So what you do when you have... a uh, a responsibility that large, which is what this is, it's not a woohoo, I hit the lottery moment. And I don't hear that in your voice, by the way. I hear a little bit of fear, a little bit of grief still from your friend passing away, 
a little bit of shock and awe, which I have in my voice, that you got this much money from your employer. That's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so here's what I suggest that people do. You need to, A, number one, move slowly. Okay. If you feel urgency or someone pushing you, stop. Okay. Because where make people make mistakes when they don't know what they're doing is they go too fast. Let's pretend you're driving a car for the very first time. I took my kid out in the church parking lot with the Jeep and the straight shift to teach him how to do the stri- drive and to do the straight shift. The first rule is don't even change gears. Let's just figure out and move slowly. Get in trouble. Stop. Okay. Right? And that's what you're going to do right. here because it's something you've never done before. Okay. <sighs> Second rule is the Bible says in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. So I want you to build your own advisory group, your own board of directors, not to tell you what to do, but to advise you and teach you. And then you decide what to do. Okay. You got a pencil? Yes. You ready to write? Okay. First thing you need is you need an investment advisor. Click SmartVestor at RamseySolutions.com. You can find one that we suggest. The second thing you need is a tax advisor. Click TaxiLP at RamseySolutions.com and find one that you like. The third thing that you need is sometime in the next year, I suspect you're probably going to buy a home and pay cash for it, an inexpensive home, under $200,000. Okay. And you're going to need a good real estate agent. That's your third person on your board, on your advisory board. Again, we've got ELPs that can sit down with you and help you with that. You need to make sure you have the right kinds of insurance in place. So you need an insurance person. I don't have health insurance anymore. There you go. You need insurance in place. And you, again, we've got ELPs to help you with insurance. We're not in any of these businesses, but we've got people set up to where you can form your advisory board. And their goal is not to tell you what to do. And your goal is not to hire a babysitter. You're a grown woman. So your goal is to gather information from advisors by which you go slow enough that you learn and then you make the decisions. Okay. And I think you can buy a home for cash and invest some of this and not have to go back to work. Okay. But I can do like my dad said. Yep. But it's okay. not its not by using the money. It's by investing the money and using the money that the investment creates. Okay. We're not going to use any of the money. We're going to put it in an investment, and it throws off an income for you to live on. Okay. With your investment advisor, and you're going to not need a lot of income because your house is going to be paid for and your car is going to be paid for. You're not going to have any debt, and you're going to be on a budget. Okay. Because, like I said, I live paycheck to paycheck. You're not going to live paycheck to paycheck anymore. You're just going to tell every dollar what it's going to do that's coming in. You're going to have more dollars than you used to have. Okay. And I want you to go through Ramsey Plus, go through Financial Peace University, and learn how to handle money. I'm going to pay for that. We're going to give it to you for a year because you've got to get up on top of this thing or you're going to live with this horrible taste on the back of your tongue called regret. Move slowly and learn and put advisors in your corner. Hold on, Kelly will pick up and we'll help you.